test the effect of pH on the enzyme's activity, we will use the catechol ex uh, oxidase as an enzyme coming from the potato juice and the catechol as a substrate. Uh, and we will use different pHs, different buffer solutions. This is pH 7. Uh, we have also pH 3, pH 5, pH 9, and pH 11. In this video, we will uh, only show the effect of pH 7 for as an example, and the experiment will be uh, the same thing for the rest of the pHs. I have to prepare two sets of test tubes. The blank, because I'm going to use the spectrophotometer to detect the formation of uh, benzoquinone, the brown pigment, and the experimental test tube. The blank has to contain all the uh, chemicals except of the substrate, because I don't want the reaction to happen inside the blank. Uh, I will start by filling them with distilled water. In the first test tube, 5 ml of distilled water, followed by 5 ml of the, uh, 0.5 ml of the enzyme and then 0.5 ml of the substrate. In this test tube, I will not add the substrate. This is my blank. So I will add, I will compensate the volume by adding 5.5 ml of the buffer solution. So instead of distilled water in this experiment, I am using buffer solutions. 5.5 ml in the blank and 5 ml in the experimental test tube. Now in each test tube, we add 0.5 ml of enzyme. Both test tubes will contain 0.5 ml of the enzyme. This is my blank test tube, it's ready. And this is my experimental test tube. It just requires the addition of uh, the catechol, and then it will become ready. We don't add that catechol until we are ready. So we go to the spectrophotometer, we calibrate the spectrophotometer first, and then we add the catechol and we start taking our readings. So we are using the spectrophotometer to detect the uh, appearance of the colorful uh, benzoquinone, which is our product in this reaction. This test tube is just the blank solution. I will use it to calibrate my spectrophotometer. So I have to transfer the components of this test tube to fill one of our cuvettes. And then the cuvette will be inserted inside the spectrophotometer. And we will click calibrate. This is only for, cali for calibration means to take out the color of the potato extract itself from our experiment. So this is done. We don't recalibrate the spectrophotometer unless uh, we need to. Now we are ready to start our experiment. Uh, we will add 0.5 ml of catechol in the experimental test tube, and we will start our readings as fast as possible. So, 0.5 ml of catechol were added. Mix the components a little bit and transfer to a cuvette. And take the first reading. Our first reading is 0 0.017. We will, should have our table of results, 0 0.017 was our first reading at time zero. And then we will start the timer, 0 0.017. We will start the timer, we will wait two minutes. During those two minutes, the color is becoming darker. Uh, we can uh, re-transfer the, the amount in the cuvette into the test tube. Wait for two minutes and then we take the second reading. Our second reading after two minutes is 0 0.108. 108. Another two minutes and we will take our third reading. We are taking now our third reading. I would like to remind you that the cuvette has two sides. This is a translucent side and this is the transparent side. The transparent side has to be sidewise so the light would pass through it and we will see the reading properly. If we insert the cuvette in the opposite direction, we will obtain wrong reading. 
So I'm ready now for my third reading. And the absorbance is 0 0.176. 0 0.176. Another two minutes. Now we are taking our fourth reading. We will record it. It is 0 0.194. And so on and so far. You keep on taking uh, a reading every two minutes. This is pH 7. So this was pH 7. Uh, one reading every two minutes until the minute 12. We repeat the same procedure at pH 5, 3, 9, and 11. Uh, we plot them all on the same graph to compare the effect of pHs on the activity of catechol oxidase.